Senator Dalfon. On debate, Senator Dalfon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Senators, I am pleased to speak today to Senator Atulajan's Bill S-225. This bill proposes to amend an act passed by Parliament in November 2014, the Cluster Munitions Prohibition Act, which implements the Convention on Cluster Munitions of May 30, 2008, which entered into force on August 1, 2010. To date, 32 other countries have passed laws implementing this convention, and another, thir another 20, rather, are working on it, while 43 others consider their legal frameworks are sufficient. As the name implies, the convention covers cluster mun munitions, which are weapons designed to disperse or release explosive submunitions. If these submunitions are left on the ground, unexploded, they can cause death or injury in the same way that anti-personnel mines can. The Convention has several objectives, including a ban on the production of cluster munitions unless they are equipped with self-destruct and self-deactivation de me mechanisms, the destruction of existing stockpiles, a ban on the export and import of such weapons, clearance of contaminated sites, risk reduction education, and victim assistance. In her April 7th speech, Senator Atula Jan rightly recalls the devastating impact of cluster munitions on innocent civilians who may come into contact with unexploded or neutralized submunitions and who are often children. In August 2022, during our summer recess, the Cluster Munitions Monitor was published. This is a publication that I have here in my hand uh, that appears now and then. The last was in 2018. And it is published by the Cluster Munition Coalition. The report states, that is the 2020, 2022 report, states that since the inception of cluster munitions, the Monitor has documented that at least 23,000 people have been killed or injured by such munitions, which means that the reality is likely to be much higher. Since all cases would not have been reported, the Monitor thinks that this could reach 56,500 to 86,500 victims, either injured or deaths. In 2021, the Monitor recorded 59 mess, deaths rather, and 90 injuries. That was in 2021. All victims of old cluster munitions that contaminate the ground, and that was mainly in Syria. 66% 66 of these victims were children. In contrast, in 2022, the situation worsened. The Monitor listed at least 689 cluster munition casualties, mainly in Ukraine, as of June 30th, 2022. ...to the Convention, including Canada. But unfortunately, 74 countries have not yet ratified the Convention, including China, Russia, and the United States, three members of the United Nations Security Council. However, among the states not party to the Convention, Greece, Poland, Romania, Singapore, Turkey, Israel, and the U.S. have said that there is no longer any, productive, any production of cluster munitions in the respective territory. In addition, in April 2022, a few months ago, Expal USA was awarded a contract by the U.S. government for the demetallization and disposal of the stock of cluster munitions in the U.S. But there are still countries that tolerate the production of such arms in their territories and their export. They need to be denounced and put on a shame list, particularly those countries 
particularly those producing the cluster munitions reported to have been used recently in Syria, Nagorno-Karabakh, and in Ukraine. Among these countries still producing cluster munitions, some are welcoming foreign investments, such as Brazil, South Korea, and India. The public denunciation of these countries must extend to Canadians or Canadian institutions, if any, that still invest in their companies, in this type of companies producing cluster munitions. Speaking of South Korea, the president of which was here not long ago, the shareholders of Anwa Corporation, one of the South Korean conglomerates, voted in September 2020 to end the company's production of cluster munitions by shifting this activity to the Korea Defense Industry Corporation, a new separate company that unfortunately seems to remain affiliated with ANWA. This was described as an empty, as an attempt, sorry. This was described as an attempt by ANWA to get rid of an unethical arms business. They still produce other type of arms, but no, not those that are covered by the convention. It is also interesting to note that the government pension funds in Australia, France, Ireland, Luxembourg, New Zealand, Norway, and Sweden have decided by themselves to withdraw their investments fully or partially in investments in companies or groups that are related to cluster munition production. Furthermore, many private financial institutions have acted to stop investment in cluster munition producers and to promote socially responsible investment in state parties to the convention, such as Australia, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Japan, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Norway, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, and the UK. So clearly, there's social responsibility being assumed by private financial institutions, and that's good. That explains why several private companies based in non-signatory states have ceased production of cluster munitions. These companies include Elbit Systems Limited of Israel, Singapore Technologies Engineering, and U.S. companies such as Lockheed Martin, Orbital ATK, and Textron Systems. So even if the U.S. are not signatory to the conventions, U.S. companies are disengaging. In terms of adoptions of national laws to prevent such type of investment, it is fair to say there is a controversy about the intent of the convention regarding investments. At least 38 countries, parties or signatory to the convention, have stated that they regard investments in cluster munition production as a form of assistance prohibited by the convention. But some other countries, party to the convention, have expressed the contrary view, including Germany, Japan, and Sweden. The current Prohibiting Cluster Munitions Act, our act, adopted by this parliament in 2014, does not contain any provision relating to investment. Such is also the case for the model law on cluster munitions for common law states proposed in 2008 by the International Committee of the Red Cross. However, the Lausanne, Lausanne Action Plan, adopted by state parties at the Convention Second Review Conference, held in September of last year, encourages the adoption of national legislation prohibiting investment in producers of cluster munitions. Senior at S Senator Atulajan's legislation does come as a response to this action plan, and it's welcome. Her bill, S-225, proposes that Parliament makes it an offense to acquire or have directly or indirectly, any pecuniary interest in a person knowing that such person is involved in the use, production, possession, development, transportation, importation, or exportation of cluster munitions, or to attempt to commit such an act. 
This prohibition will cover loaning funds or guaranteeing a loan of funds. Do we have no current data on the extent of Canadian investments in cluster munitions related businesses, if any? Nevertheless, I see merit in Bill S-225. I think it will send a strong message to Canadian investors and maybe also to other investors in foreign countries. The bill proposes to use criminal law, the criminal law power of the federal parliament to enact a new offense that could lead to conviction further to an indictment or a summary proceeding. But it is worth mentioning that in both cases, the proceedings could only be commenced with the consent in writing of the Attorney General of Canada. It is also notable that in both cases, the federal prosecutor will have to prove beyond any reasonable doubt that the investor was aware that the investment was made in the person involved in one or more of the activities targeted by the Prohibiting Cluster Munitions Act. It appears to be that a conviction under such a regime may be rare, but I leave it to the committee process to assess the proposed regime. Incidentally, by adopting a statutory ban against such investment, Canada will become the 12th country since 2007 to enact a legislation designed to prohibit investments related to cluster munitions. The last country to do so was Italy in December 2021, less than a year ago. The Italian law is, is titled Measures to Ban the Funding of Manufacturers of Antipersonal Mines, Cluster Munitions and Submunitions. That law prohibits the financing of businesses engaged in the manufacture, production, development, exportation, stockpiling, whatever, of cluster uh, munitions and submunition, as well as antipersonal mines, a category of arms not included in the proposed bill before us. I've, it's another issue that the committee could look at. Furthermore, the Italian Parliament has opted for a regulatory scheme under the authority of the Bank of Italy and some other regulatory agencies instead of creating a new crime. The Italian law empowers regulatory agencies to instruct registered Italian financial intermediaries to ensure compliance. Failure to comply exposes these intermediaries to a substantial administrative fine ranging between 150,000 euros to 1,500,000 euros. The committee called to review Bill S-225 could also consider the model law developed by the Cluster Munition Coalition in conjunctions with Human Rights Watch and Harvard Law School's International Human Rights Clinic. It draws heavily on the report, stay, 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 Staying Strong, Key Components and Positive Precedent for Convention on Cluster Munition Legislations. This model law, for example, adopts a slightly different definition of what is prohibited, and that we could find useful to compare and possibly to amend the bill. In conclusion, comme l'a fait récemment la sénatrice Coyle. As Senator Coyle recently did, I urge you to complete the second reading of this bill and send it to committee for study and report. Thank you. She <laughs>